What's going on everybody? Broken Games HDR back at it again with another video. Feels like it's been a few weeks since I made an actual video. Just wasn't nothing to talk about and just been out here playing these games. But the nominees for Jeff Keighley's The Game Awards have been announced. So we're going to go through all of the categories and see who's been nominated. And I'll let you know who I think will win, should win, all of the above, and we'll get right into it. So let me just switch screens and let's just, uh, okay, let me go back to nominees. Um, we're going to view all the categories. And yeah, let's just start with the most important award, um, game of the year. And we'll go in reverse order. Um, so for game of the year, we have uh, Plague Tale Requiem, uh, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, and Xenoblade Chronicles. Uh, as I've been saying for the longest, I've been telling people, I do not believe that Bayonetta would be nominated for game of the year. And I was right. Last year, I told people that Returnal would be nominated for game of the wouldn't be nominated for game of the year. And I was right. Some of y'all, I think, have an inflated sense of like um, importance on the games that y'all prefer. I like Returnal. I like a lot of games that don't get nominated, but I'm able to disconnect myself from how much I like the game, you know, and to what was the the overall, you know, impact and to know if it will be nominated and recognized in a game of the year category. Some of y'all don't have that objectivity. I got that. So with game of the year, right? My game of the year um, so far, I mean, it's, it's going to stay game of the year is God of War Ragnarok based on what I played, right? I played enough that this is my game of the year. Prior to that, yes, it was Elden Ring. I platinum the game, love Elden Ring, but to me, I think, like I said before, I think a, a lot of people's amazement of Elden Ring came from the fact that a lot of them never played a Souls game before. Souls game was largely um, new to a lot of the people who played Elden Ring for the first time because you can look at the sales. I don't know what Elden Ring is up to at this point. I don't know. Let's say 20 million. All the, all the uh, Souls games prior to that, you know, I sold like, three, four, five million. So you can argue that a lot of the people that played Elden Ring were new to it. So that's why a lot of people got this, and that's not taking anything away from Elden Ring. A lot of people got this, you know, this, uh, this, this, in their purview, Elden Ring was doing something brand new that was never been done before. But as to my purview, it's really just a Souls game in an open world, which nothing is wrong with that, by the way. But I don't think it was this revolutionary, um, innovative thing that, I think a lot of the the industry and newcomers thought it was, and I don't think that about God of War either. I don't think God of War is um, super innovative and this brand new thing that's never been done before. But as I tell people all the time, innovation is overrated. Most of my favorite games of all time don't do anything innovative. My favorite games of all time just do everything really well. And if you think about the best games ever, it's rare that those games are innovative. They just take what's already been done and refine it and do it the best. That's what the best games do. They don't do anything the first, but they do it the best. So innovation is, I always say innovation is overrated when it comes to gaming. Of course, it needs to be done, but it doesn't necessarily make the first game to do that innovation the best. Um, so yeah, to me, Elden Ring nor God of, God of War Ragnarok, which are really the only games... Um, <laughs> if we're being real that are really being considered for game of the year it's really between elden ring and god or ragnarok to me neither one is innovative um but to me the the game that is better overall you know with all the things all the dimensions that i uh think about when i consider a game to be the best of the year that's god of war ragnarok so that's you know personally uh, my choice so let's um let's go on so best game direction uh very similar game direction and, and, and uh, game of the year usually are very similar. Um, you can argue that what wins game direction should win game of the year um, because game direction literally means the gameplay and the game design and game of the year, you know, is usually that that game design is usually heavily weighed into uh, game of the year. So there's an argument to be made that one should win both. But sometimes that doesn't happen. 
um, Elden Ring, God of War, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, uh, Immortality, and Stray. Um, oh, wait, did I mention Stray for... Uh, yeah, Stray and Xenoblade Chronicles, I did. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Um, so for best game direction, yeah, I would honestly go with the... Uh, I would go with the same thing. God of War, Ragnarok. Um, it, it is tough, like I said. But yeah, I would go with, you know, God of War, Ragnarok. If you simply put a, a gun to my head and you were like, choose one game to play specifically based on the gameplay... Yeah, I'm choosing God of War Ragnarok. And you got to understand, I'm someone who is a little bit fatigued and jaded. Um, I've said this before with the Souls games, because I've beaten like all the Souls games, all the Souls born games. I've beaten the Souls uh, indie type games, you know, the ones that are not mainstream or, or made by uh, From Software or made by the pop. I've been beaten like the 2D.5 uh, indie Souls games. The, the, bad souls games so i'm somebody who's a little bit you know like i said fatigued of souls games so because i played so many different types of them um so for game best game direction i would still go with uh god of war um best narrative so i've i haven't played a plague's tale requiem haven't played immortality um obviously eld played you know platinum elden ring played god of war Horizon Forbidden West. I actually prefer Horizon Zero Dawn's story and narrative over Forbidden West. So, and you know, Elden Ring's Elden Ring story is hidden in the lore. It's one of those, it doesn't really have, you can argue that Elden Ring doesn't really have a narrative. Souls games don't have a narrative. It has a, has a, has a plot, a story. <sighs> narrative is, narrative to me is literally like a story being told to you. Um, through dialogue and in and, and other ways, but I don't think that's what Souls games do, and I'm not knocking it because of that. Um, I think it. I think it has. You know, to me, it just has a a, a plot and a and a and a story, but not not a narrative. There's like small differences between those. So, hey man, I would go with God of War again, but you know, um. Best art direction. So best art direction, I would honestly go with Horizon Forbidden West. Uh, I think Horizon Forbidden West um, does look better than God of War. Um, you know, visually what they did, it was, uh, I would say it's, it's a more noticeable jump from uh, Zero Dawn to Forbidden West than what we got from God of War 2018 to Ragnarok. And Elden Ring, you know, Elden Ring looks looks great for what it is, but it's not like, you know, it's not groundbreaking visuals or anything like that. Um, and Scorn is just gross looking and Stray is Stray, like Stray, but yeah, obviously not um, winning nothing for art direction. Best score in music. This is something that I typically don't care about that much. Y'all know this. Like, I don't really pay that much attention to music and score when it comes to games for me to even notice like a musical score and, and you know music and score it has to really stand out to me so i i'm gonna be real i'm going to uh remove myself from this conversation i couldn't tell you i couldn't tell you or remember what any of the music or score is for any of these games that i played i didn't play xenoblade obviously i did play a little bit of hellsinger uh you know I, I couldn't tell you anything I remember about the score or music for any of these games. It's just not something I, I uh, really care about like that. Um, best audio design. So this is interesting. Uh, I think best audio design, I would honestly, I might give that to either Call of Duty or Horizon. Honestly, I think that's Call of Duty or, or Horizon. Um, Call of Duty has really taken huge leaps in terms of in terms of audio design, even visuals. Because remember, there was a point a, a point where each Call of Duty visually and audio and audio wise was very stagnant, where it was no change. And then one year, it was like, hold on, this 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 visually took a leap. I forgot what was the first game where Call of Duty like first took a leap, but I was like, whoa, this this looks really good. And then audio wise and animation wise, it was it just took off and like really improved. Um, so yeah, I would give that to Horizon Forbidden West or, uh, or Modern um, Warfare. 
either one of those deserve that, but not, I don't think Elden Ring nor God of War deserve, deserve it. And, and I don't play racing games, so I don't know about Gran Turismo. Uh, okay. Best performance. So got Ashley Burke as um, Aloy, of course, and of course, in Horizon Forbidden West, Charlotte McBurney in The Plague Tale Requiem, um, Christopher Judge as God of War, uh, as uh, Kratos in God of War Ragnarok, Man. Man engage in immortality and Sonny Suljic in God of War. He plays Atreus. I will give it to uh, you know. Uh honestly, I think I, I really like how Sonny Suljic has performed Kratos in Ragnarok. I think like he's really came to came into his own as a, as an actor and you know with the mocap and the voice acting. I would actually give that to Sonny Suljic. I I would give that to that young man. Give that young man an award. He I think he deserves that. Uh games for impact. Uh I don't really care. I don't I haven't played any of these. I don't care about this. Um best ongoing game. I'm pretty sure I don't play any of these. Yeah, I don't play any of these. That shows you what I think about the state of multiplayer games right now. I hate all of them. Um, best indie game? Sifu. Without a doubt. Sifu. Sifu is an amazing game. Like, this Sifu needs to win this game or else. <laughs> like, I got a I got a serious problem if Sifu don't win this game. Like that that game is just it's so good what 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 Slow Clap did, you know, with this game, man. Um if that doesn't win, I'm fine with Stray. I didn't play Cult of the Lamb, didn't play Tunic, didn't play Neon White. Um, best mobile game, y'all know damn well I ain't playing no mobile game. Um, but what's this? Best community support, that's the same thing with as ongoing game. I don't play none of these current damn multiplayer games. Um, innovation and in, in uh accessibility. So the thing about this category, right? We know a lot of developers have been putting this increased in, in, uh, emphasis on accessibility options to the point where it, let's be honest it's a little bit annoying um not saying it shouldn't be there but you know it's it, they've been going like crazy with it um and obviously i've only played god of war ragnarok and the last of us part two but I, last of us part one remake i don't know exactly how what to base this off of right so is it is it just who has the most features and accessibility options like literally how much you can number and how far they went with it. If that's how they're judging it, I guess that's something that you could quantify, right? You could just literally go into the menus. Okay, let's see, you know, the extent of how far they went with the, their accessibility options. And I think this is something usually this stuff is based on opinion, but this is something that you could actually quantify and, you know, use a metric to, to actually check. And we know PlayStation has been going crazy with it, you know, in The Last of Us. I, I, as far as I know, Naughty Dog is probably, I, I don't want to say the first, but one of, one of the first to really start emphasizing um, accessibility options. So I, I, and I don't, like I said, I didn't play this or this or, you know, I played an hour of the quarry, but it tried to kill me with the motion blur. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't know. I really wouldn't know with this. It's not like I tamper with the accessibility options. I just see them because they're obviously thrown in my face every time a game is announced. Uh, but let's go to next one. Uh, what is this? Best VR AR game. Obviously, I haven't played any of these. Let's keep going. Uh, best action game. Um, Sifu. Sifu. Ooh, or TMNT, but Sifu. Um, yeah, Sifu deserves that. They might throw a little bone to Bayonetta, maybe because it, it didn't get nominated for Game of the Year. They might try to throw it a bone. And, you know, they say uh, Bayonetta is action personified and all that jazz they be saying. So maybe they might give it to uh, Bayonetta 3. But Sifu for me, best action adventure game. Um, so I'm going to be real with you. When I think of when I think of an adventure, right? When I when I think of adventure game, right? Because you got you got action game and an action adventure game. What does it mean to be an adventure game? When I, when when I think of like what it means to be an adventure game, I think about like this is a game that really took me 
to a lot of places. Like I feel like I I really went to a like a lot of areas. It took it literally took me on an excursion, took me on a journey. I went a lot of places, right? A lot of locales, a lot of um different environments, right? Where you could compare it to um in in real life, you felt like if you go on vacation and you go on an excursion, you feel like you really went a lot of places and it took you somewhere far out right that's that's the way i can you know i think about it it really took me on a far journey and i feel like i kind of get that feeling more from horizon forbidden west uh even though i haven't finished ragnarok and i'm yet i'm 25 uh plus hours in i really get that like journey slash adventure feeling from Horizon Forbidden West more than, you know, God of War, Ragnarok, if we're, you know, specifically speaking on adventure, which is what this is. Um, you know, they say traversal and puzzles, puzzle solving and all that stuff. But for me, I, you know, I gave you all my definition. So I, I would give that to uh, Horizon Forbidden West. You know, that's just, that's just me. Uh, okay. Best role playing game, Elden Ring. Yeah, Elden Ring. No, that's that's an automatic. Best fighting game. I didn't play any of these. I is it's it's funny that they consider. Uh, yeah, Sifu is uh, technically a fighting game, but I I think usually when you think about fighting games, they consider you know, um, the what we think about fighting game, what we think is fighting game, Street Fighter, Tekken, that type of stuff. Um, going you know playing actually against other players pvp and stuff like that but uh yeah i i don't know what would win this i'm really not sure um maybe multiverses because it was it was very popular at first but it kind of fizzled out so i don't know best family game or otherwise known as the nintendo category um i would give this to splatoon 3 i love splatoon 3 as many of you know so i think that's going to splatoon 3 um or Mario Rabbids. I love that game. I put so many hours in that game, beat it. Amazing game. So um, I, I also beat Kirby in the Forgotten Land. And Nintendo put out some bangers this year, bro. I was very happy with, the, you know, the type of games Nintendo put out this year. I beat a bunch of them. Pokemon coming out, going to beat that too. So I'm, I'm fine with either Kirby, Mario, or Splatoon 3 winning. Uh, best Sim strategy game. Uh, for me, the only one I played is Mario Rabbids, so I'm going to go with that. Best sports racing games. I don't play sports racing games, so I really want to know what to tell you. Best multiplayer game, as y'all know. Okay, but, okay, so they counted TMNT and Splatoon 3 in there. I'm going to go with Splatoon 3. I think Splatoon 3 honestly deserves to win that because that game is so underrated and doesn't get the respect it deserves. Give that to Splatoon 3. Do not give it to COD. Do not give it, just don't give it to COD. Don't give it to COD. Don't give it to Overwatch either. Don't do that. Content creator. Y'all got the nerve to put Nebellion in here, in here. I cannot believe y'all. Listen, I'm not hating on Nebellion. I, I don't have anything against the guy. But he does not create content. Creating content means you make something typically from nothing. You are making it, right? Ne what Nebellion does, and there's no shame in what he does. I love what he does. I wish he would keep doing it and come back to Twitter. But what he does is he takes information that's already been created and puts it in bullet points. That's not creating something. That's more like dispersing information in a concise way. <laughs> that's not creating, which is what this category is. Content creator of the year, not popular person on twitter of the year because if that was a category then definitely give it to that man sure and you know this is a sympathy nomination because he's been doing this i think for like 10 years he's been doing this for a long time so the, the so the time he decides to quit twitter that's that's the first year that y'all decide to nominate him why why now he's been doing this for like a decade why now y'all decide to just nominate him it's a simple it's disrespectful honestly don't don't give somebody a sympathy because yeah that means you don't really care about me you don't really f with me like that it's just sympathy uh best debut indie game um i'm gonna stray is the only one i played so i'm gonna go with stray best adaptation uh for like a tv show or a movie 
Um, I would go to go with Sonic the Hedgehog. Um, I seen Uncharted. I seen Sonic. I haven't seen the Cuphead show. Cyberpunk Edge Runners was really good. I heard. Um, but I would give it to Sonic the Hedgehog, honestly. And y'all know I'm always looking for a way to hate on Sonic the Hedgehog, but you can't hate on that movie. Most anticipated game, Resident Evil 4. I don't even see I don't even need to see nothing else. Don't don't put nothing else in my face. Resident Evil 4. I don't need I don't need to see nothing else. Best esports game, we don't care. Best esports athlete, we don't care. Best esports team, we don't care. Best esports ghost, we don't care. Best esports events, we don't care. We don't care. Um, so that's it. Those are my thoughts on who should win, what will win. Um, I don't know if I made it clear that my personal, um, with Game of the Year, I, I believe Elden Ring will win, right? I believe it will win. My personal is God of War, but I, I strongly believe Elden Ring uh, will win. Um, so those are my thoughts. Let me know what y'all thought, uh, thought is. Hit the like button. Follow me on Twitter. Watch Weapon Wheel. Um, join the Discord. Our Discord is great. You can do that by... Uh, Becoming part of the Patreon, you know, um, get After Dark, which is a great show um, at, that we put out on Mondays that we record the same day of the podcast, answer everybody's question. Uh, yeah, all that good stuff. Hit the notification bell so you can know anytime I upload or go live. And I will be live streaming some games that are coming out soon. I'm live streaming Evil West, live streaming Callisto Protocol. Yeah, getting back into live streaming a few games. So yeah, um, I'll catch y'all on the next video. I'm out of here. Peace.